Hello once again, everyone. So, I want to talk a little bit about a variation of a guard that I like to take that was taught to me by a good friend of mine, uh, Kurt Holtzbetter. So, Kurt, if you're watching, I hope your ears are turning nice and red. But this is a variation of the position known as Vumtag or High Vumtag, as it is more often than not called. And just some small adjustments that he kind of recommended to me that I really enjoy and that I like to use and that hopefully you guys can get use out of. So, let's talk about what high bum tug is, right? So, bum tug is just means from the day, right? From the roof, etc. cetera. Um, high bum tug is the name usually given to its higher cousin, wherein your sword is above your head. Now this position, as well as at the shoulder, exists in every single sword fighting system in the world, right? Anytime you put two hands on a weapon, you got here and you got here, your dominant sides, right? Straight above or to your right side or left if you left handed. Now, it comes from many different names. Obviously, there's also, you know, Poslidona kind of has the same thing. Soprana has its same thing. You've got um, Judon, which is up here. You've got a bunch of things. But the basic idea behind going all the way up there is you get gravity, right? We don't often talk about that because when you're sparring with people, you're kind of walking a fine line in between effectiveness and actual power. At least, you should be. Right? The problem with that is that more often than not, we're fighting purely along this plane, because we're talking about counters and other good things that deal with the center line, as opposed to just basic cutting. Right? When it comes to that, really the best way to make your strongest cuts, you're, they're going to come from above, they're going to need a little bit of gravity on their side, and they're going to need that weight coming down with it. So, the idea behind a high position like this is that from here, when I do any cut, be it a right over or fendenti, a left over or fendenti, or the scheitelhal straight up and down, that's going to have a lot of force behind it because that's all the weight of the sword, the pulling of my lats and my chest and my passing step all coming together on a relatively sheer line. Especially when you're you know, talking about cracking down into people's heads or into their necks, that's a lot of cutting force. And if you watch anyone cutting tatami mats, um, or any cutting target for that matter, they don't cut out of here, at least the successful ones don't. They raise the sword and put their whole body into it. Because if you're cutting with the intent to go through, you need to. So, another nice thing about this guard is that one, it doesn't give a whole lot away, right? From here I can cut from either side, I can also cut from below, I can execute pretty much every single cut with the exception of like one or two from this position. You can also thrust and it's very easy for me to see what's going on. I'm not limited. And in fact, when I fight multiple people, I usually like to take this guard if I'm not in any armor, because I can very easily threaten anywhere I'm looking, pretty much. It's a good open position for that. But, not to mention it's scary. You know, someone takes this with intent, you're like, ah, right? But, my issue with it, and, and in general the thing that I wanted to modify, is that people aren't always respecting it for a couple different reasons. One, you may not necessarily have the intensity or courage to properly use this, and that's fine, right? Alternatively, even if you do, people may not respect it because these swords aren't sharp, right? Because there isn't the threat of death, or because they just think they can get in there faster than you. You are standing relatively open for a moment, and so if you think you can get in there, you very well may. So, what Kurt showed me and what I've been using great success, Holt von Tag as I call it, is rather than standing open, I'm instead going to bring my elbows in and my sword a little bit more kind of in front of the crown of my head. So the way I like to measure this is I put my pommel on my forehead and I just push it out to the point that my wrists are naturally straight again. My elbows are relatively forward and then my sword is held a bit more in front of me. Now, the most obvious thing you're going to say kind of immediately is, oh, I'll cut your hands. You probably will. The point here isn't for me to stand there. Like any guard, with a few exceptions, I'm not looking to just take this and slowly but surely inch my way toward you. This, much like at the shoulder, is only a thing I'm taking for a moment, for a purpose. If I want to play in the middle line, I go to the shoulder, I execute my technique. If I want to play from above, I go up, I execute my technique. That's long and short of it. Otherwise, I'm not going to be there. Too much effort, too much opening, too much time for you to think about it. So. What do I get out of this? By bringing 
the hands a little bit more forward. What I get is I get a lot more intensity, a lot more power, and I also get a lot less open, right? By not opening my chest and pulling it back, there's no looseness. Especially when I see people up like this, I can definitely get in there in time because there's a slight delay before that sword comes out. When it's more forward and more centralized, it's played pretty much immediately. I'll show you a side comparison here. If I'm back and open, even with my best cut forward, there's still a decent amount of hands before it's open. When I'm forward and in front of my crown, the blade gets out a lot sooner. I'm also doing a lot less work, um, not, not in regards to physical exhaustion, just in regards to what's activated. Here, it's just my left hand pulling down, my right hand pushing out, and my uh, chest and lats engaging, and I get a really good cut. What's also nice about this is, again, I can cut from any angle, so it gets all the usual benefits, it's just a little bit more centralized. The way I like to practice with this, and I encourage you to do so as well, see if you like it, get yourself up into Holt Bumtag, I'm going to tilt, cut. Return, back to center, tilt to my left, cut. Return, back to center, straight down, cut. So I've got my three main angles of cuts from above, and as you might be hearing, these tend to give really good tachikaze, or sword wind, because everything's activating the way it needs to. This is great to use on tatami, by the way. Now, from there, you can also start putting in your passing steps, etc. right? Till, cut. Till, cut. Straight forward, cut. Strong, centralized, pretty much everything I'd want out of that guard. I'm not saying that you can't get those same things from here out of practice. This just encourages everything you want to get done. Now, Kurt likes to do all of his Meister how out of there. I don't. I have my own personal preferences, but that's that's a thing between he and I. We can agree to disagree, and we can both hit each other about it. But one thing else I do really like from this is definitely going to be use of the Scheidel in a retreat and unters. So what I mean by a use of a Scheidel in retreat. So the Scheidel is straight from 12 to 6. When you are more open and you're looking to use it while stepping backwards, as oftentimes people will either try to cut your leg or alternatively, um, they're close enough that they've, they've dropped your sword and your moment has come. When it comes to stepping backwards with this, when I'm more open, there's a sort of weird disconnect. That being, with my hands getting more extension, I have to either kind of force my body back, or alternatively, to compensate for that, my body ends up coming forward because I am so high. Now I am overemphasizing a little bit for sake of the camera, but these are things I feel, and you may have felt them as well. What's nice about this more centralized sort of Holtzbomtag is that I don't get that, even if I do pass backward, right? With my elbows in, it's pretty much just my arms, right? I don't have to lean back away from it because, frankly, my arms and legs just feel very connected there because it's tight in the core and it's activating where I want it to. Now, another thing I really like about this is when I do my hunters, like I said, this is, there's a couple different lines you can do unters or overs on, um, but especially with unters, the biggest ones are going to be either your extended unters, where you're looking to get out and far. This is usually good if you're looking to um, trap someone's blade, move up against them, or you're going for low target and you want to get up in underneath. Or alternatively, your high unters, which should be thought of more as your you know, stromic sone, your wrist cuts, your smaller cuts, etc. These are good for nicking into the face, or alternatively for getting yourself into position for a hand slice. Because even though the hand slice itself isn't the cut, that quick little action to get around their arms is very, very beneficial. Now, the reason I really like these hunters is because they come up with the sort of malicious, visceral kind of terrifyingness to them that forces people to have to bind with me, and I really like that. Now, the way that works is I've got my elbow centralized, i got myself nice and down, I'm going to let the sword start to fall. So as I let the sword start to fall over, I'm going to end up kicking my right side forward and pulling on that pommel so I get a nice, tight little unter. Now with every unter of Sultani, you want to be stepping pretty far laterally. Because this is targeting pretty much only face level, this is really, really good for a mix-up. Especially if people think that they're going to be targeting you low, you can catch their sword or even knock their sword out of hand occasionally. But once again, I let the sword fall, just kick it forward, throw it to the side. Basically, nice and relaxed, then it gets all its power. Works on both sides. 
I love the sword tilt the other way. Very, very strong. That one in particular can really surprise people. If someone tries to cut from their right side against you, kicking that out can almost get the same effect as a Vexel Howl, which is quite nice. But, either way, these are things that I personally like to really do out of this card, and I'm sure as I continue using it, I will find more things that I like to do. Kurt certainly has more things that he likes to do, and who knows, maybe this will encourage him to make his own video on it. But, either way, I just wanted to go over it because I've had people ask me about this zone, and what do you do from it, and what does it get you, and the answer is, it should get you strong cuts from above. So if your position can't get you strong cuts from above, you probably need to adjust some things on it. And, you know, you might find a version of it you like a little better, you know? Not every situation is different. Every single pass with the sword is slightly different. You know, it's like a new fight each time. But either way, thank you very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.